Gentlemen, we had an early feast this year. Uh, I'm not sure if you did, but I I know I didn't eat Thanksgiving early. I'm not talking about Thanksgiving. I'm talking about a f- an amazing feast of announcements <laughs> of shows coming uh, to Disney+. Plus. It's not quite the same thing, but I see what you did there. <laughs> well, it, it's true. From a certain point of view. Uh, we need Steven. <laughs> we need Steven. I know, I just uh, I can't do Steve, it. Steve, if you want to so come on better. and yeah. record that real quick. Yeah, we'll talk about everything that we got and didn't get uh, from Disney Plus Day next. This is Tatooine Sons. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. <laughs> Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream... <laughs> That Porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Tomorrow night, did we get like a confirmed time? They just said uh, the showing is at five o'clock in the evening in Pacific time, and then it's like I thought it was the day before. No, 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 no. Mm. Tomorrow, and then, and then, I think after that is when they show. And they, the Sony's of uh, the t- official Spider-Man account on Twitter. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. No way home uh, account. They said too. it was coming out. Yeah, uh, welcome to Tattooing Sons, a pop culture podcast. Uh, we are the only fan podcast to name a s- canon Star Wars creature. Turbis is canon, and be endorsed by Ryan Johnson, mm-hmm. who did not have his trilogy announced at Disney Plus Day. Dang it. Which would have made there was no, no sense. Been, there was a lot that wasn't announced. Well, yeah, there would have made no sense though because it's exactly. a Disney Plus day, exactly, Good not point. a movie day. But everybody's probably taking it as <laughs> they've canceled this trilogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait uh, for the the headlines. Yeah, we believe that pop culture is the mythology of our generation. That there is a story; it is written on our souls, and that these myths speak to that story. And that is why we are talking about the legend of Boba Fett and Kenobi and a plethora of. stories. Stories coming from Marvel. Why, why did you? <laughs> why did you space that out so much? Because I know you know you got You want to say Star Wars, right? But yeah. that that's not. So uh, I'm David. I am the dad. Hi, dad. And I am honored to be joined every week, uh, but especially this week. I'm super excited to record this. It's been a weird, hard couple weeks, and it so really has. having a conversation with you two about this is great. How are my amazing sons doing? Good, good. What are you talking about, Sammy? Um, we're going to take a look under the helmet, or should I say? Boom. Yeah. Um, of one of our favorite Star Wars characters, at least one of mine. You got, I was going to say, you got a mouse in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we like him too. So, what about you, BB Nate? Well, Marvel had a really big day on Friday. Yeah, we've, yeah. Jo- we've pretty much established Marvel had the, uh, the big day Friday. <laughs> exactly. You dead? Uh, the sizzle reel for Obi-Wan Kenobi should completely change your expectations for this series. Yeah, have, have you watched it? In I actually have not yet. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have. I was waiting to watch it with you guys and then apparently I, okay. you all, all watched We're going to just like go pull back the curtain on the show. I promise you we're going to pause this in just a minute because we have a seg- we, we pause between segments mm-hmm. when we're recording. And we're watching. We're going to watch I that. I figured we were going to. Uh, because you're not talking about Kenobi <laughs> having watched it. Um, with it. Make sure you guys stick around uh, for the dad moment this week um i think star wars fandom <laughs> needs a stern talking to um and that's coming up at the end of i had it um scheduled for the kenobi segment but i think it makes it, sense it works to be better after the, the marvel the marvel segment mm. since marvel got all the fun um this, hey, epi- no. this episode is sponsored by cufflinks.com remember that they have over three thousand items on their website from star wars marvel dc lord of the rings yes uh, Rolf, if you're listening to this, Star Trek, uh, NFL, <laughs> NCAA, Major League Baseball, NC, or I said that, NBA, and everything else that you can think of. We're very got all the sports. 
All the sports. All, all the sports ball. We love them. Thank you guys for sponsoring <laughs> our show. Uh, make sure you're following the show on whatever podcast app you're listening to. I uh, hope you're enjoying our new schedule um, as these episodes are coming out now on Tuesdays. And then we have our interview series coming out on Friday. And last week we had our great conversation about growing up Star Wars with a Star Wars dad and then becoming a Star Wars dad with Pete Fletzer. And people have really responded well uh, to that. So if you have not listened to that one, um, please check it out. Um, I'll go ahead and link to it in the show notes if I remember to do that. Uh, I'm super excited about Friday's episode. You okay over there, paper boy? I am okay. All right. I'm going to call you paper boy if you keep paper boy. I, I like that. Um, it's like newsies during the show. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me, I'm the king in New York. All right, uh, intro uh, sequence is taking a little bit longer exactly. than usual. Stuart, uh, Stuart's going to be on our pastor. Uh, he's going to talk about the Matrix. I am excited about this episode. Yeah, y'all had a good discussion about that. A fun conversation. That's it. All right, Sam, go. <laughs> <laughs> all right um for disney plus day disney released a special all about my guy boba fett titled under the helmet uh we're going to discuss what makes boba fett special his real origin story and the infamous boba fett toy that's dun, all dun, next dun. be on your guard there are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world All right, then. Keep your secrets. You're coming to us. Is as the footsteps of steps and steps. There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo Baggins, and none of them should be used lightly. Yeah, I did a movie <laughs> I one last night. <laughs> I felt so bad for the guy. I know. You sat, did you, did I tell you yeah, what yeah, happened? You told yeah, yeah, So we, we went to uh, see the Rogue One uh, Disney Plus Day Star Wars special screening. Special theme. screening. We knew because we follow everything on social like you guys do. And the runtime. And the runtime and everything else that it was going to be Rogue One. And we were super excited to go see Rogue of course, One. It's Rogue One. <laughs> Sam didn't get to go. I'm sorry, Sam. But it was probably yeah, for the best because <laughs> you're even wearing your Rogue One shirt today. I am. Uh, you, <laughs> I was bummed that you weren't there. It didn't yeah. feel right not yeah. uh, ha- having you there. But, you know, physics exams. Uh, I listened to the soundtrack, though. That's hey, so that I works. guess that's something. But there was a guy in there. It was us. It was like 9.15 on Sunday night is when it started. Oh, we got home so late. <laughs> we did. Because it was all the way in Pensacola. So it's like an hour drive back uh, to and from. But we're sitting there in the theater. And there's this one guy in the back. And we the movie gets over. And we were, I mean, they showed the Book of Boba Fett trailer, trailer. T- or whatever it was. Uh, all that before. It Disney was great. Stuff. I was sitting there geeking out the whole movie. I was like, this is such a good movie. I love this movie. <laughs> and then we get done and we're walking down the stairs. And he walks past us and he goes, man, Disney like gave us a head fake with this thing. And I'm like, what do you mean by talk about it? It's like, I thought we'd get like an episode of the book of Boba Fett or Kenobi or something, (laughs) man. (laughs) <laughs> it's like uh no no uh, so anyway for about, five dollars you expected to get an early episode and there's three of people in the room <laughs> yeah so. no, that's not happening uh, but wishful thinking right yeah. yes um so let's let's talk about um some of the interesting concepts that came out of that short <clears throat> um excuse me you all right there no i'm not um <laughs> <laughs> Choking on my own spit. Uh, professional podcasting here. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> so Boba Fett only has about six minutes and 32 seconds of screen time in the original trilogy, along with a whopping four lines of dialogue. Okay, hey, hey, right now, you're a Boba Fett fan. You should know all four. Go. Oh, shoot. <laughs> um, as you wish. He's no good to me dead. Put car, uh, Captain Solo in the cargo hold. That's only three. That's all I got right now. I don't even know. Wow. Do you know the other one? Oh, I can't remember it now. I can't. I'm you know, sure. it's when you're trying I was to kidding, remember. Though. Yeah, no, I'm not I, I did I'm good. Not that's seventy five percent. That's a C. Fett fandom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all of that makes it surprising that he had such a cult following uh, over the years, sparking the entire Mandalorian culture that we see in like Clone Wars mm-hmm. and stuff, yeah. and being the inspiration for the Mandalorian TV show, as Favreau originally wanted to create a Boba Fett TV show. Wow. I guess dreams really do come true. Um, now, I may be a little bit biased, so for you guys, what do you think makes Boba Fett so special? I think that it was just a cool suit. 
mm-hmm. especially at the beginning. A lot of people were judged it by how different it was and everything else. It wasn't super clunky and a weird looking suit as a lot of the sci-fi movies had back then. It was it felt like an armor and it, it was it had its own kind of story to it and you can tell that by just looking at it i think that's that was what made it so interesting and like Mm -hmm. everybody was like okay this person has ties to darth vader i want to know more about him and so i think that's what made people get drawn to him so much well you know there's only one of us that grew up during the boba fett exactly you know Mm -hmm. era the start of it i'll promise you it has nothing to do with thinking about his backstories or anything like that he looked Freaking! Cool. Oh, that's how, that's yeah. what Sammy had. Like, it was yeah. it was the coolest looking character. He was different than everybody else in Star Wars, and he just he and he was mysterious. I'll say that in the Empire Strikes Back and in in Return of the Jedi, there was the mystery. The whole no disintegrations and everything. That's the other line. Yeah. Oh no no no! That's no, what no. he says. As you wish to. Oh yeah. oh, oh okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Right, So anyway yeah so. <laughs> Cool. That's Vader. Um, that, that's why he was loved. And he, he, he just he's cool. He's and cool. as the resident Boba Fett fan, I can't confirm. That's why I liked that character. I thought he looked cool. But I mean, he even just he's that mysterious gunslinger vibe, right? He doesn't talk much, obviously, but he's a threat to be reckoned with. He just holds himself with this gravity. Um, and that's, you know, I think that's that's definitely why I gravitated to him. And his helmet, it's such a striking design. You notice that T shape anywhere. Um, so yeah. I think y'all, I think you're about right. Uh, we also got Boba's real or origin story in the special. Originally, his armor was going to be all white, and Lucas wanted to have a hundred of the suits made for the Empire's super troopers um, for Empire Strikes Back, but due to budget constraints, they could only make one. So, thanks to the amazing minds working behind the scenes, including Ralph McQuarrie, they uh, created the look of Boba Fett as we know it. Um, now, I was under the impression that the public's first exposure to Boba Fett was through the holiday special, but that's not the case. Dad, why don't you explain what they they, ex- they So, according that? to the amazing under the helmet, say you know short, which thing, they fit a lot in twenty minutes. They, they did, did that we talked that you got. If you haven't watched it on Disney Plus, watch it. It's the best thing for Star Wars that came out of Disney Plus Day. <laughs> no, it's the second best thing that came out. Um, <laughs> it's best for me. Yeah, yeah I, mean, anyway, I would. So anyway, they uh, they threw a parade in Marin County. Um, um, and they had start. It was like holiday parade, wasn't it? I yeah, think it was, I think yeah. it was. It was something like that. And, and they had, you know, they had Darth Vader, and they were the screen used suits. Yeah, for Darth the Vader real Darth Vader suit, and, and then the Boba, Boba Fett suit painted and everything else. Mm-hmm. Walking down, and you see, uh, you know, the video, the footage of these kids just transfixed by Boba Fett, and it's amazing how a character that you have no idea who he is, no idea what his name is, nothing like that. These kids immediately are just looking at it they already knew vader and you could see the reactions to that Mm -hmm. but boba fett was the one that their eyes just locked on and Mm -hmm. wouldn't let go of and i think that goes back to the previous uh you know question and conversation Mm -hmm. uh in the segment where we're talking about it's just he looks so cool (laughs) and that's what the kids were thinking and that's what as a kid growing up in the original trilogy that's what your boba underwear right oh yeah my boba fett (laughs) underoos Oh my gosh! Um, I, I gotta find those. Yeah, I mean, but like, <laughs> funny enough, find your death of Superman comics yeah, first. <laughs> those would fit. Um, but like, like what you're saying here, one of the reasons that Star Wars was so successful was the memorabilia you could purchase. Um, this sec- success also contributed to the success of Boba Fett, uh, but it, it didn't quite go to plan uh the figure was marketed to have a missile launching jetpack this was still when you like mail in your proof of purchase and they would mail you a figure when they were produced like what they did for the first movie um and they were promised to have a missile launching backpack or jetpack but upon release the missiles were glued into place for safety reasons um making the few in existence as their only prototypes extremely valuable i think like one sold for like what was it seventy five thousand or something insane i think even more than that. i probably more than that um but they showcased one of the lucky collectors um who has i think two of them yeah in this special nate Steve why don't Sansweet yeah from nate, why don't you talk 
talk about guys, yeah. uh, Steve Sansa, Stan Sui and his Boba collection, all of his Boba stuff. I mean, of course, we've been exposed to Rancho Obi Wan for a few years. We first really started to hear about them at Celebration. With yeah, he had, and he had a little bit of a boost. Um, and walking around there, it was really cool seeing all the stuff he had. And then, of course, he always shows up every year. Um, Rancho Obi Wan is known for being the biggest Star Wars collection in the world. I mean, it has the Guinness World Record of it. And so it's really just a cool place to think about he has all of these amazing things of star wars i didn't even know existed yeah. like the tap dancing star wars characters that he had he had a boba fett one mm-hmm. it was shown in this like who even knew that existed but he has the whole collection and so it's really awesome to hear about this guy just dedicated his life to having this giant collection that's a bucket list item for me right, yeah right now is what, to go tap to dancing no to go to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, no, but uh, but to go to Rancho Obi Wan, yes, and like and not just go, but like you realize Absolutely. he personally tours you. If when you really when you sign up to go, he'll he'll personally give you. a Where tour. is it? It's uh it's in, Northern in, California. Yeah, it's in California. Yeah. You know, he worked for Lucasfilm. Oh, oh, um, well, that explains why he probably so. has a lot of that stuff. Yeah. But, but he's yeah. also a super collector of it. Obviously. I mean, it is incredible. They showcase like a small portion of his collection in that short or in that special. It's unbelievable. It's, it's insane. Um, but a lot of the stuff is Boba Fett stuff because it is such, like you said, an iconic image. You recognize that when it's put on a merchandise. Um, and then they had some really big names um, show up to do some interviews. Dave Filoni was there to talk about Boba's influence um, on the Clone Wars TV series. But they even had Kathleen Kennedy and George Lucas what? show up for a little bit. Crazy um, Uncle George! What are your guys' thoughts on George showing up? He's tended to kind of stay away from Star Wars ever since Disney well, bought it. I think that he... <laughs> Him coming back, I think he feels like is a necessity for this thing he loves so much. He knows that all the fans are kind of just angry at Disney and are like, bring George Lucas back. So him showing his support for what Disney is doing. I'm going to correct good. something you said there because you used a, a blanket statement that's just not accurate. Not all the Star Wars no, fans. No, you know what a I did. Very mean that. small vocal group of Star Wars fans are stupid about this. <laughs> They're the same ones that like produced the people versus George Lucas after the prequels that were mm-hmm. against him. Then. And now are like absolutely all for it. Absolutely. So I think that that's an issue, but anyway, carry on. Yeah. I just, I think that <laughs> him showing his support for Disney and their decisions is a really big deal. And him showing his support for Star Wars is a big deal. I think that he understands this is his, <laughs> this is his baby. This is what he's he's made. This is his passion. So, yeah. and, and I also think that the relationship that he has with Dave Filoni is a exactly. reason why, because the, the book of Boba Fett series is um, is being executive produced by Dave. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big deal. The character is a big deal to to George. Yeah. I think that this is an opportunity for him to show his support for not just Star Wars in the Disney era and Kathleen Kennedy, who mm-hmm. he handpicked. Right. To be the president of Lucasfilm as part of the deal, Mm -hmm. but also because he's got the relationship with with Dave Filoni and now John Favreau. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think he wants to support them on that. So, yeah. Um, Now, they had just about everybody involved in bringing that character to life uh, that you could think of in this special Save the one that had the most impact, uh, Jeremy Bullock, the actor who wore the suit in the original trilogy. Sadly, Jeremy passed away last year, um, but they had his wife uh, share about his story with the character, along with how kind and understanding he was with fans. Um, I had the the privilege of meeting him in Celebration 2017, waited in line for... Two, two three hours mm-hmm. uh, to get his autograph because he took his time with each of the fans. Um, and, and he I had a long him. line. One of the most popular autographs in the entire con. Easily. With the longest lines. Mm-hmm. And he is he is having a conversation with every Boba Fett fan that came to his table. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I got to go up there. I don't really, it kind of was all a bit of a blur <laughs> when I got up there. Uh, but he signed my Boba Fett backpack, which I still own to this day. It's not in the best of condition, but I, I used it because I wanted to show it off. 
Um, but I got to meet him and I, I took my picture with him. I, we have that picture up in the podcast room. Um, so it's, it's very, very Sam standing sweet. there pointing at his backpack with his autograph standing next to Jeremy Bullock. And he's got those braces on. He looks like <laughs> super nerdy. Oh, I am so that. nerdy in that picture. It's a great picture. It it's one of my favorite picture. pictures. Cause mm-hmm. you, cause you look like a little kid in it. Oh, you yeah. are a little kid. I was a little kid. So it's, but, it's funny how much I've grown in four years. Yeah. Wow. It's only been, <laughs> little, yeah. Wow. Anyway. But, um, so that was a kind of bittersweet for me, but it was interesting to hear her story about yeah. how he almost didn't get the role. Uh, he was doing something yeah. for theater and when he got the audition call and he didn't feel like doing it but his wife or, you know convinced him to go and now it's and changed it changed his world. it changed his life it changed star wars um because he was able to be a part of that and the way that he embraced that it reminds me a lot about dominic pace i'm standing here looking at the other side of our podcast studio <laughs> and we've got you know the gecko the bounty hunter uh, uh comic book that was that they made um and then a, a photo and they're both autographed by dominic and he's trying to to take that legacy of jeremy bullock and his love for the fans and the and the characters the bounty hunters and stuff and taking that back and, and kind of continuing that legacy mm-hmm. now now that Jeremy Bullock has passed on and so we're super excited that that uh, that gecko is now canon mm-hmm. yes um, congratulations so again, again congratulations Dominic on that yep. yeah um, but there's while we did get a lot of info on to the character of Boba Fett there's quite a bit that we didn't get we didn't get any reference to Mandalorian culture really I mean we just discussed how that is a fact but they didn't really talk about that at all We didn't get any reference to the Mandalorian, which Mm. is what brought this character back into the public consciousness. And we didn't get any new footage from the Book of Boba Fett. They just like speed ran the trailer that we had already gotten. Why do you guys think that this was the case? I think it was just they wanted to focus on what Boba Fett meant to all of the original fans. And, you know, it's a it's a story that a lot of us didn't know about. Uh, You didn't know about most of the stuff that happened with the toy or that he didn't show up for the first time in the holiday special. And so it was just a way to kind of like, okay, well, we all love Boba Fett. You know, there's a moot show coming out soon. Let's tell you about how he became to be. So. Yeah, I love the fact that they didn't reference exactly. any of the new content coming out because then it became about Boba Fett and mm-hmm. about celebrating that character and what he's meant to fans and the actors involved and everybody involved without it being, hey, let's pitch the new show or let's pitch the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. that kind mm-hmm. of thing. It's been awesome to see that character simply celebrated. Yeah, I agree. It, it, they did the character justice i feel like and and jeremy mm-hmm. with that um while we didn't get anything new in terms of story we did get some new details as to our favorite as to how our favorite bounty hunter came to be and why fans latched on to him so well and i for one am a big fan of the short or of the special so very good yeah good segment Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was a good job. Um, we're gonna we got some bad news coming up here in a second. Um, uh, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen battle in the Obi Wan Kenobi sneak peek. Did you guys see that moment? Oh my gosh! When they, yes, when they, they battled argued each other. so much. Um, yeah. Um, well, no, that's not what I was talking about. Anyway, um, <laughs> goodbye, Tom Holland. Uh, he's gone um, as Spider Man. Oh, star. it's because he spoiled right. too much. And, yeah. <laughs> And Henry Cable is, uh, is it Cable or Cable? It's Cable. 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 It's like travel, um, but Cat. Okay, thanks. Cable. <laughs> um, he's not very happy about J.J. Abrams' Superman. So we'll talk about what? that up on Bad News. This is not going to go the way you think. All right, we started the segment last week. It was our, uh, what did Inaugural. you wear to- Inaugural. What, what, what did you wear to church yesterday segment? And since I don't even know if I got to see you guys dressed up for church because I was at a different yeah, church a different or something, yeah. uh, I, I need to find out. So Samuel, what would you wear? I mean, I pretty much always wear my Mando tie, uh, my Mando sc- skull tie, my hyperspace uh, tie bar. I didn't wear the socks because they were dirty, but I did wear some blue Millennium Falcon cufflinks. Oh, you wore the white shirt I with did, the cufflinks. I mm-hmm. That was interesting. I never worn cufflinks. I'm a little before. jealous. How, what was that like? It was interesting to try and figure out how to put feel, on. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. That's cool. What about you, BB Nate? Anything I wore, special? I wore the BB8 tie and tie bar and everything. Which looks really sharp. Did you wear the socks? I did it actually. The I whole did wear thing. The socks. The whole whole get up. That's awesome. What about you? I didn't wear anything Star Wars. <laughs> All right. Because I didn't have any clean shirt to wear with. It, so <laughs> fair enough. That's what happens when mom's in the hospital again and you've been traveling. So anyway, yeah. uh, obviously the three of us are sharp dressed fans um, and we appreciate the opportunity to have them sponsor our podcast. They are absolutely amazing. The thing that we love so much about cufflinks.com is the 
not just the cufflinks, it's the ties, like they said, the socks, the tie bars, everything else um, is a way for you to show your fandom in a subtle but mm -hmm. really cool way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a. Yeah, I actually had somebody, you know, compliment that. They're like, it's so subtle. I didn't even notice it. The BB 8 tides. Who was it? I don't remember who it was, but <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody said it. Um, All right. They also actually have over 3,000 items, which is a lot of items on the website covering not I've just. I've counted them. You, uh, wow. You, you that's know, how you yeah. spend your time. No life, dude. No, I have. <laughs> covering not just cufflinks, like their name, but ties, tie bars, socks, money clips, which why don't we have a money clip? Because nobody carries <laughs> cash anymore. I, have, I like, do. A whole lot of cash. I have not right gotten now. a card yet. I'm so cash. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's getting even closer to Christmas. It, I know it, you, you, some of you are like me and you want to wait till like after Thanksgiving, start thinking about that stuff because, you know, you got to give Thanksgiving its, its due diligence, but you got to start thinking about Christmas shopping. So use the code Tatooine15 at checkout to receive 15% off everything on the site with no minimum order required. That's right. Head on over to cufflinks.com right now, today. Like, pause. You don't even have to pause. You can just keep listening to the yeah, show. Yeah, in the background. But go over to cufflinks.com and then find, you know, put all the stuff in the cart and then use that code Tatooine15 at the checkout. Well, you want the bad news or the really bad news? Yeah, I said it in the uh, in the teaser. This Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen battle in the Obi Wan Kenobi sneak peek. What? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the Obi Wan Kenobi sizzle reel a little bit later in the show um, after Sam has a chance to watch it. Um, but if you have a life outside of Star Wars and you haven't watched it, or you're like Sam, um, here's what you need to know about this headline: the sizzle reel doesn't show you and and Hayden battling at all it's uh the show's concept art for the series the headline is designed to amp up unsuspecting fans generate a click and inevitably lead them to a letdown and that is why i'm giving this a clickbait level of seven yeah, yeah. um goodbye tom holland marvel announces new spider-man star wow um so this one's from Inside the Magic. I think they, they're back for their weekly appearance. Uh, check out the opening sentence in this article. Oh, yeah. The last one was Giant Freak and Robot because they're mm -hmm. always here. They're always here. Uh, though Tom Holland has one last run with a Marvel movie in Spider-Man No Way Home next month, Marvel Studios isn't wasting time moving on with Spider-Man without Holland under the mask. That's, so, like a, that's a terrible line. I mean, it is. It's like they're, they're just throwing him away. They're getting Holland for Spider-Man forever no it's just the end of the trilogy <laughs> yeah uh no no worries it's just more garbage click late clickbait as this has nothing to do with the mcu films or even the spider-verse films from sony this is a rehash of the exact same garbage we exposed last <laughs> week regarding black widow this article is assuming that tom holland won't be playing peter parker slash spider-man in the animated shows announced on disney plus day there isn't even a confirmation of this because the reason Holland didn't voice a character anima animation before had as much to do with his contract as it did anything else. Uh, but recent developments regarding the Spider-Verse could potentially change all that. This one is definitely deserving of a clickbait level it 10. Is That's wow. terrible. That is bad. And Henry Cavill gets... Cavill, not Cavill. Cavill. Yeah, Cavill. Right. Um, gets honest about DC's Black Superman reboot. Ooh, that Yikes. headline just that, makes that, me cringe. I know. It's like, it gets f me physically and angry. Oh, yeah. It's really bad. This is from Epic Stream. We had, we had three uh, pretty weekly appearances this week. It's not hard to find this stuff. I just <laughs> gotta go to their website. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for that headline on an article we're linking in the show notes... You won't find it. This is the headline as listed on Epic Stream's Facebook page. The problems with it are numerous. First, it suggests that Henry Cavill is against the reboot when it says that he gets honest about it. <laughs> the air quotes on a podcast. Um, <laughs> second, it throws race into the forefront, which is horribly irresponsible. And the image used has an angry version of Henry Cavill's Superman. But Cavill's comments are supportive of the J.J. Abrams version in production, saying that Superman resents something far more than skin color. And why not have multiple Supermen going on? Joaquin Phoenix did a wonderful Joker movie. So what if it's not tied to the rest of the franchise? They have multiple comic book storylines happening at the same time. And so this headline is crafted to specifically bring out the worst in fan reactions. Yeah, so it definitely deserves a 10. It's absolutely hideous. Yeah. 
It really, it, it's that was yeah. It, it really angered me when it I does. saw it. Um, it me too. It. When you sent it to me, I was I was not happy. Yeah. <laughs> but, All right, it's your turn. Yes, you get to keep going. Disney Plus Day was a disappointment to some, but to Marvel fans, it was a great day. So let's just dive into all the news. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not a fuse? There's only one god man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. That man has no limits. I think that's even better than the front almost. You're crazy. I'm being the Olaf facetious. poster. Was- Woo! Hey, I always got a little worried though when they handed them to us because it was only the Olaf side. <laughs> and I was like, uh, We're going to the Rogue One Star Wars thing and you're giving us an Olaf poster. And anyway. then I just flipped it and it was just Book of Boba Fett. But awesome. We had first looks this week from the Marvel Disney Plus Day special Disney Plus thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> three little new trailers. We got Actually, the longest Not one was really four. even trailers or I teasers. Mean, it, Moon Knight was kind of the Sizzle? closest for a teaser esque yeah. thing. But first reactions to the thirty second teaser for Moon Knight. It looks trippy. I love it. It looks dark too. I mean, li- I mean, obviously, literally, it's a dark setting. But <laughs> I mean, just that like whole bathroom scene where he, like mm-hmm. everything's messed up in there and he's beating the crap out of somebody. I mean, it looks intense i I don't think it looks good it kind of reminds me of um of daredevil a little bit the few episodes i saw it kind of gives me that vibe yeah well you 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 apparently don't look at the notes Um, no i don't (laughs) so (laughs) baby nate's over here with this look on his (laughs) face it's all good uh i liked it i think it was awesome obviously you know there's some different uh he feels like a dc character how's it can i say it that way Uh, is that like an, an insult or is that a compliment? No, I think it's, I think it's he, he, he reminds, <laughs> he reminds me of your favorite oh, superhero yes. character. Um, but I also love sort of the, the waking and sleeping the schizophrenic sk- the yeah. dream because Jekyll also, and Hyde almost in, in reflections the, at the beginning, he was walking past reflection in the mirror and the reflection was staring back at him. Wasn't walking. Oh, wow. That's just, yeah, I noticed that it was really cool. I didn't I'm, see that. Yeah. I like, Sammy said, and just totally took from my notes, a lot of Batman vibes from this, especially the bathroom scene. Very excited about it. And depending on how this show's go, this show goes with its tone, it might be a way for Marvel to do the rumored Daredevil reboot show mm. on Disney+. Plus. Uh, explain to me why you say that. Well, because, okay, we, had, we haven't really had a dark show for Marvel yet, or really yeah. a dark anything i mean what if with its doctor strange episode was the darkest that okay. marvel ever went so you so, feel like the like if they can pull off the moon if they can that pull off this story. gritty like you know city okay. feel they can do well with uh daredevil we also got she hulk stuff which was pretty cool yeah i mean we didn't get much but we did see hulk and she hulk in the same room and the line you know you don't want to get me angry you wouldn't like me when i'm angry which was fun but this actually, and they were kind of dressed like it was the 70s uh hulk show yeah, yeah which i have show. no idea how that will tie into anything but we'll see of course and this actually might also tie to daredevil with jennifer also being a criminal lawyer mm. um so that that's interesting everything's coming maybe up she's in right uh, no way home maybe she's cool. like a prosecutor and 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 uh daredevil's the that'd be kind defense of cool. attorney that'd be really cool <laughs> um just superheroes there's a superhero court uh, there probably is and i just didn't know but miss uh, <laughs> marvel didn't actually get all that much from this one but we did see kamala in her first costume based off yeah. of captain marvel yeah. which was really awesome now for the new announcements for the shows echo which this is probably the biggest one to come out of all the new announcements echo focuses on maya lopez played by uh, okay Aliqua Cox, which is a lot like Charlie Cox. That's actually no, interesting. I don't know. Like <laughs> Cox. Well, the last name's the same. I don't know if that's just, on, I don't know. But a character from Marvel's upcoming Disney Plus series, Hawkeye. So this is going to be, she is going to be in Hawkeye. But it's not clear if it will follow Maya before or after the events of the November MCU series. Okay. Maya Lopez is tied very closely to Kingpin, which is very telling for if Kingpin is going to be in Hawkeye or not, judging by the faction series with the, uh, 
the tracksuit gang working for Kingpin. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then this person also is working with Kingpin. And this might be connecting to Daredevil again with all the Kingpin stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with that. We have X-Men 97. Now, this is a new show. Ah, this is exciting. It is. Uh, this is a new show that is going to be telling tales set in the original show's I timeline. literally have the theme song going through my head and right now. Yeah, I, I was yeah. just about to ask... Um, that's Spider Man. Oh dang it! <laughs> I was I was gonna ask Dad. Did you ever watch this show? I used to watch it all the time. I had a feeling. Yeah, it, like, it was like I used to watch it as a kid too. Yeah, I saw a few episodes. Yeah, yeah it's, I watched Wolverine awesome. and the X Men more. Yeah. I like that one a lot more. But okay. no, this is a really good series. It is really good series. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Don't know why Marvel Studios is picking it up as a way. To, they said a good way to introduce X Men back to fans, but it's weird. It's Marvel Studios. Interesting. <laughs> um, but we'll see. And actually, a lot, if not all of the original voice actors are going to be reprising their original oh, roles that's and exciting. more. That is cool. That is really cool. Now we have Spider-Man, f- Spider-Man, not men. Sorry. That could have, some, somebody's going to take that in the wrong way. Spider-Man. <laughs> I can freshman. see the clickbait headlines yeah, now. Exactly. Spider-Man. We got this covered. Sp- uh, Tatooine Sons <laughs> confirms <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> freshman the, year. The, yeah. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man freshman year. Um, the the animated series follows Peter Parker on his way to becoming Spider-Man in the MCU with a journey unlike we've ever seen and a style that celebrates the character's early comic book roots written by executive producer Jeff Trammell from Marvel.com. Any theories on the show? Please speculate. We are totally going to get the Ben moment, the Uncle yes. Ben death moment. It's going to happen. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of cool that they're doing it in an animated series. Though. Mm-hmm. It's a different. It's not like the same thing. And the art really does it look does like look the old like, comic mm-hmm. books. So it's that's exciting. actually pretty cool yeah I'm, I'm curious to see where they go with this it, it, and i think it's a nice way to tell the origin story without doing it in another movie it's such a not overdone origin story but everyone knows spider-man's origin story at this point so it's nice that they're giving him that treatment at this point but not in the fashion you always see it and yeah. i can i just there's a part of me that feels like they want to go down this comic book style because that helps bridge the gap from the fans that are used to watching the marvel mm-hmm. stuff to now they get to see it in comic book form and maybe that connects them to comic books so that they're going yeah because marvel's you know originally a comic book exactly um (laughs) yeah i don't know what is gonna happen with it i'm excited for it though and we have marvel zombies which is exciting the animated series from marvel studios reimagines the marvel universe as a new generation of heroes battle against an ever-spreading zombie scourge Scourge. directed scourge Mm, okay um (laughs) All right. Directed by executive producer Brian Andrews and written by executive producer Zeb Wells from Marvel.com. Now, no Robert Kirkman was talked about in the announcement article. Think this means anything? Mm. You think that they're kind of just like taking the idea but not having him consult on it? And if do you think that might be a problem? I don't know. I, I think they're just going to run with it. I, I mean, that's what they did with the first episode, too, I think. The what if. Right. So I think they're just going to kind of take this and make it their own at this point. Um, but this is strictly a copy of Marvel Zombies. Like, the logo is the exact same. Interesting. So hmm. this, is, this is a... Yeah, kind of a it might suffer comment. a little bit from Robert Kirkman, but Kirkman might want to turn it into something that the MCU doesn't need because um, he can tend to write some pretty dark and well, um, the intense Con series stuff. itself was really dark. Right. I'm even surprised they're making this into a series. Right. So they'll probably try and just keep it in house uh, and make sure it fits within the the framework. Yeah, maybe. I'm wondering if they're gonna maybe suffer a little bit by that, but we'll see. I'm excited for it. Now, of course, we had a lot of things we already knew about, but we got a couple more, you know, in, a lot some information on these things. Now, Hawkeye, we got a whole new clip from this show on the Disney Plus Marvel special. Mm-hmm. So, what did y'all think of it? I think it looks like a lot of fun. Um, it was interesting cinematography there in that short. It was all one cut for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it, it seems like they have a really fun interaction, the two characters. And it, it feels Marvel, but it also feels like a fun Christmas thing. Like, and a spy really, movie kind of too. Yeah, yeah. It, fi- it feels like a, a holiday show. But it's still got our Marvel characters that we know and love. I'm very hard excited. in Marvel. Yeah, I'm very excited for it. <laughs> Dad? Yeah, I love it. I loved the clip. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think that the relationship between Kate and Clint is going to be... Um, it's it's going to have to, to 
to develop over these mm. six episodes. I think that um, that could be really interesting to see the the way that those two interact. Mm-hmm. I still want to understand. There's these these couple of times in, in the original trailer and now in this clip where you sense that there's something more going on with Hawkeye. Um, and it's obviously tied to Ronan and, and that kind of thing. I just, I really, I, I know that there's a connection there to Kate Bishop. We've mm-hmm. talked about it on the show before, but, uh, I really want us to see the, the weight of Natasha being gone, mm-hmm. what he did as Ronan, all of those things. I want to see that impact him and not just this film or this series to be just kind of a light Christmas adventure wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, see the emotion. I don't think it will be. I think that they're going to handle it pretty well, but this show actually comes out next week with two episodes. Seriously? Any any hopes for the Holy show? Cow. Theories? I did not realize it was coming out so soon. I hope we get a lot of Rogers the musical. That's what I hope. <laughs> Just one yeah. episode dedicated to Rogers the musical. Come on, let's let's do it. They need to like do that's a why, bonus that's why feature they where two. they show the whole musical. Oh yes, yeah. I think that'd be great. Fully produced. (laughs) That's gonna go. I mean, they okay. We did have this one part in the trailer. I'm sure that they're the clip that we saw. I'm sure this is just a reference. I think he was joking. But in the faction run, Hawkeye does lose his hearing, and so when he was in the car, he's like, "I can't hear you. You drive." Yeah, and but even before she did that, she She, was mimicking. Yeah. So I'm wondering if he's starting to lose his hearing a lot, like in the faction run, which is awesome. I don't know why I love that that idea so much. It 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 adds more to the character. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he's not super powered. He can lose. His he's hearing. human. Yeah. He's human. Um, the next one, Agatha House of Harkness. Whoop, whoop. Now, honestly, from the announcement article that I read from Marvel, it looks like this show is going to be set before WandaVision. What do you all think about that? Dad? I think that makes perfect sense because she's still stuck in nosy neighbor mode what, what's what the, the west, city with? westview no. yeah, west yeah i think that's uh, she's it. still I'm stuck sure. in westview <laughs> kind of as her punishment for me from, Agatha, from right. uh, wanda in this so uh yeah i was worried they were going to try to continue the story which should make a lot of sense i want to see that backstory mm-hmm. yeah um i love the the idea that we're going to find out more about who she is that's going to be that's going to be, gonna really be cool. a lot and i think eventually you're going to see that she gets let loose from the oh totally the, the stuff that that'll be like a post credit scene or something or maybe the Mephisto final episode will come in really <laughs> because there's a huge relationship in the comics between Wanda and Agatha um, mm. over time. And so mm. I want to see that continue on at some yeah. point. So. Yeah, I agree. I think it looks really interesting. And it, it, it's such an interesting character that we got like one few minute clip in the beginning of one of the episodes for backstory for her. And that's all we've got. Um, so there's a lot. I mean, that was what back in whenever the Salem witch trials were. That mm-hmm. was a couple hundred years ago. I mean, what has she been There's getting time. up to at this mm-hmm. point? Yeah. I'm curious to see where they go. With yeah, this. me too. I'm, I'm excited about this. And <laughs> the next one I'm going to actually have to get a lot of Sam's thoughts on now. It's Iron Heart, a genius inventor who creates a new sort of suit of armor, which is as advanced as Iron Man's armor. Now, Sammy, what do you think about this? Iron Man's your guy. And so they're kind of giving the mantle to someone new. I mean, <sighs> I remember when the comic series was announced. it just by the name. I just, yeah, I thought the name was kind of dumb. <sighs> you know, it's not for me, but I know that I guarantee you there are a lot of people who like this character and g- draw inspiration from it. It is a female Iron Man. That's what it is. Iron Man was the inspiration for me to get into engineering. I'm sure mm-hmm. there are plenty of girls who are going to be inspired by this character as well and i think that's really cool it may not be for me i may end up loving it i don't know i mean it's not gonna replace tony he's he's my guy but it could be interesting i'm i'm cautiously optimistic for it let's go with that i love i love that the idea that you know that you can can see this character being an inspiration uh for others Mm -hmm. and and that's the beautiful thing about all of this it is it is subjective. It is, yep. it, you know, you don't have to like everything. Exactly. Um, it's been fun for me, you know, as, as the person that's kind of managing social media, as we talk about <laughs> on the show, but I put out a post last week on a couple of the Facebook groups um, with all 10 of the eternal characters, mm-hmm. the Eternals, mm-hmm. and no commentary on who I didn't like or what uh, the movie or anything posted it on Just some Marvel groups. Who, you liked. 
who's your favorite eternal and why and interacted with people on it. And it's been fun yeah. to see, you know, and there's been like, I love the fact that this character really, really connect. They connected with these mm-hmm. characters in certain ways. We don't have to like everything about these things for it to be cool. So, mm-hmm. um, I, but I am, I'm curious to see how they're going to pull that off. Um, in this, it, they obviously have a, a, a plan for it. So it's, mm-hmm. of course, sounds like it's going to be pretty, yeah. pretty cool. I'm, so. I'm excited for it. I think, I think it's going to be interesting. Now we have secret invasion, not secret, Secret Wars. Very different. Um, there you go, Dad. And we got like one little image from it, and it was Nick Fury. Or is it? That's the question. Now, mm-hmm. are y'all excited for this? Or you you don't we don't really know much. We just know it has to deal with scrolls and kind of taking over everything. I think so. that it was definitely Nick Fury. Um, you think his actual that. Nick? I think that was yeah, actually he had the uh, the the scratch on his face from yeah. what the flirkin. The flirkin. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know the scrolls are are awesome. You're gonna get some fun characters in that. Hopefully, you think we'll get uh, whoever plays Krennic, that guy, his his scroll back. Didn't he die? Did ben Mendelsohn. No, ben Mendelsohn. No, I don't think he's. No, I hope he, we get he him back. Die. Yeah, no, I think he's. A he good. was fun. He was fun. <laughs> but he's a we good guy. We got this covers. Getting ready to put it out an article. Yeah. The Tatooine Sons confirms that Ben Mendelsohn is dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks, Sam. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well also the guardians of the galaxy holiday special now they f- threw up the logo which we've already seen but other than that they did not even post an article about this so we had nothing does it come out this year for this new no, it comes out next year before oh, Guardians three okay okay um which is exciting i'm really pumped for the holiday special i think it's gonna be I think awesome it's gonna fit those characters it is well going to, to fit them like so that. well of course drax is gonna be like what is the point of this no drax Christmas. is gonna start talking about his home world's traditions in excruciating uncomfortable detail yes and then you're gonna want star lord to make groot the christmas tree for the whole thing <laughs> you know that's gonna Jeez. happen um but i got, I got nothing i got you know after that where do i go (laughs) and what if season two now okay y'all weren't huge fans of what if season one are either of y'all looking forward to the season two? i think that you that you're you're speaking out of turn you okay so i was not a big fan of the way that they ended yeah season one at the end of season one were you like okay i would like to see a season two absolutely okay but i did not care for the ending of season one yes i did not like the final episode okay okay so let's just do this. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's bring it on. I think that they've got lots of, you know, they've created interesting stories, interesting characters and interesting universes for what a season two that we're going to continue. I think that wherever Natasha lands uh, in the end of that, we're going to get uh, in the end of season one. We're definitely going to get, gonna get more Carter. of that story. We're going to get some Captain Carter. We're going to get Doctor Dark Yeah, Doctors. with all the clips that they showed throughout this whole thing, it was just Doctor Strange. So I think they're making him the primary focus of this show, which is what I got from from the whole series. I can see that. He was the main kind of like the second main character besides the watcher. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's very exciting. And then of course, speaking of Groot, I am Groot is coming out. It's going to be the tales of baby Groot and him growing up in a new world. I am really pumped for this show. Um, what do you guys? I have no idea what to expect from this. Uh, yeah. And how hard is it really to write dialogue for this one? It's it's gonna be interesting. They actually had um an I am Groot comic series that i read the first oh, couple yeah, issues yeah, yeah. for i still have them it was a lot of fun he okay. like he got lost on a weird planet and was like always getting into danger it was awesome okay it was it was cute. a lot of if fun. you like the character of baby Groot, you'll like this show basically. yeah i missed him we didn't get enough of him uh and then he just went to teenage Groot, which i don't prefer to that's a Groot. that's a lot of marvel it is a lot of Marvel. Yeah. We spent a lot of time talking about a lot of different things. Yes, there was uh, a lot. With that. And I uh, I guess it's time for us to throw in a dad moment here. I am your father. Yeah, I had the wonderful privilege of flying across the country uh, during the bulk of the Disney Plus Day of festivities. Um, it was fun. I mean, the anticipation leading up to it was pretty palpable. Everybody was really excited. They were counting it down. Um, the confusion during it was a little hilarious. Yeah, the way they did it was like so strange. Let's make all these major announcements on a Twitter thread and they kept they kept uh, layering on you guys don't do Twitter so you don't understand this, I know I was you, trying to like find the thread and figure it out and I had no idea what so, I was doing so when you so they would tag you know uh, Amy Adams and Patrick Dempsey for Disenchanted right they'd be tagged in that one and then they would put reply to that tweet with the next announcement and tag people on that and reply to that tweet with the next announcement and re- tag the people involved in that problem is every time you're doing that you're tagging everybody above it in this so it got a little bit weird um, <laughs> for that you know like Patrick Dempsey 
Epstein's hearing all about how people are upset that, uh, you know, everything going on with Star Wars <laughs> and stuff. And this went on all day. Um, and that's kind of leads to the next part, the meltdowns afterward, um, especially from Star Wars fans um, about this, where it's actually kind of em- embarrassing. First yeah. of all, fans should never attack social media managers. Uh, for these brands. Uh, I mean, do you really think that somebody in San Francisco who's making barely enough money to live in that massively over, priced city um, has any control whatsoever about what is and what isn't going to be announced right um, with that that's not their fault why do we feel so entitled um, to the to to more than we actually got uh, is the other thing that I don't understand we aren't entitled uh, to anything uh, it's 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 funny because the night before this BB Nate you and I were <laughs> messaging back and forth about what we hoped would be announced and I thought there'd be a lot more Star Wars mm-hmm. uh, announced in this and you cautioned me um, to you know, kind of hold back those expectations a bit, wait to see what actually happened. And I, and yeah, I love the fact that you guys are both like that, that I have sons who understand what is and what isn't important uh, when it comes to fandom. So, well, I've just, I've been a DC fan for years, so I've had to temper my expectations for a long time. He's been disappointed (laughs) for his entire life as a DC fan. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, The future of Marvel is looking very bright. Then Hawkeye comes out next week, which is so exciting. I'm so excited to see my favorite Avenger coming to the the small screen. And a new trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home came out today, or at least... It's uh, not. No, see, it's not... Day you're listening to this, but it doesn't come out till like the end of the day. So yeah, most so. people that listen to this, they're still going to be anticipating. Well, it comes out it's in a come few hours today. There you it comes go. out in a few hours. Yeah, so uh, very very nice. Um, very nice. We got some movies coming out. Uh, a couple things happen in this week, and some uh, one trailer that most people listening to this podcast probably don't <laughs> care about, but we do. And uh, we'll look at the box office numbers. That's up next on Movie Moments. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. We have a couple new releases this weekend, and I'm actually interested in both. Um, the first one we already have tickets for. It's Ghostbusters Afterlife. It is about a, when a single mom and her two kids arrive in a small town, they begin to discover their connection to the original Ghostbusters and the secret legacy their grandfather left behind. Here we go. Ghostbuster. If if they don't like that have that nice. like on the radio, I, got, I actually I could go with some MC Hammer and do Ghostbusters Two song. Oh, okay. go ahead. I haven't go seen ahead. Ghostbusters. Too hot to handle. No, too let's, cold let's to hold. We will call the Ghostbusters <laughs> and we're in control. Sorry, sorry. I still have to see that All one right. before, uh, before the next one. But it is stars Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things, McKenna Grace, and Carrie Coon. Studio is Sony Pictures, so that's probably why we're getting an, an Spider Man No Way Home trailer. <laughs> This, this week, week. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The director is Jason Reitman, the son of the original director for That's Ghostbusters. Cool. And it is rated PG-13 for supernatural action and some suggestive references. There are so many reasons for us to watch this movie. With, I know. Like, the fact that it's, like, the... I mean, it's a pop culture big time. Yeah, right. Huge deal. Yeah, but at the same time, it's, you know, directed by the son mm-hmm. of the person that does it. So there's connection there to what we do. That's, Maybe a little bit. It's the multi-generational story within it. Mm-hmm. Um, with it. It's perfect for us. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm super and we've got tickets. For it. We already do yeah. for Thursday. So yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to see that. And um, the next one is King Richard. Uh, it's about a look at how tennis superstars Venus and Serena Williams became who they are after their coaching from their father. Richard Williams. I know okay. this one name's going to get you. Oh, I saw it. I see. Yeah. I, just, I just went, oh, no. Um, the stars. That first Will one, Smith. Will Smith. That's a hard one. Um, ha. This Alrighty. is actually, can you try? I'm going to see how you pronounce it. Do you know what it is, Sam? No. Okay, go. On you on? No, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> on you on. It's called Ingenue. Ingenue. All right. <laughs> you yeah, I, I didn't. I had Ingenue. no. I had no. I didn't know. If, like it was like the J was a, an I H. I intentionally or... made sure that we didn't talk about it before because I wanted to see how you'd pronounce that name. So. <laughs> on you on. It's Ingenue. Ange- 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 <laughs> Whatever it is, Ellis and John <laughs> Bernthal. <laughs> Just look up the casting if you need. Yeah, it. and John Bernthal, who <laughs> wasn't he in Daredevil? I feel like he was in the Daredevil TV series. I don't remember, but the studio is Warner Brothers. Hiss. Um, <laughs> the Hiss. director is Zach Balin and is rated PG-13 for some violence. But if you language. are um, uh, in publicity or marketing or advertising for Warner Brothers, please know that BB Nate still loves you. And oh my gosh, yes. But sometimes uh, the decisions uh, made by Warner Media I, uh, okay, are let interesting. Okay, be nice. But Walk okay. it back. <laughs> it is rated The opinions PG- of BB Nate do not... Ex- the opinions of BB Nate do not necessarily re- represent the opinions of Tattoo 
Between Sons or the rest hey, of the hosts. Between Sons show. LLC. I have to be honest. Um, <laughs> it's rated PG-13 for some violent, strong language, a sexual reference, and brief drug, drug references. Right. Now, the trailers, there's only one. It was Downton Abbey, A New Era. There were some others, but they were movies I would never, we would never even have a conversation yeah. about. So. Um, and, of course, Mom is super excited about this. since She's been a Downton Abbey fan ever since the first season started. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be exciting. The mm-hmm. box office numbers, Eternals, still at the top, which is good, but not doing super well with 27.5 million. That's a not good. Drop. That is a significant drop, right. which plays into your theory dad that it was going to have a significant drop in the second week and it is especially this week with ghostbusters coming out and we had clifford the big red dog with 16.4 million that's which, in second place this that's honestly a lot better than i thought it was going to be doing huh. um and dune with 5.5 million so yeah is that it? I think that's it. You did a good job. You did Thank back you, to back to back stuff. I know. Like we I'm, finished I'm, your <laughs> bad news segment, part of the segment, and then we went straight into your big segment, and then you did the movie moments. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. You did a good job. Uh, while we didn't get a ton of Star Wars content from Disney Plus Day, which we've mentioned already, uh, what we did get, from my opinion at least, was more than enough. Um, hearing from Ewan McGregor's own lips that Kenobi and Vader might have another swing at each other is the most exciting thing that this Star Wars fan uh, could have heard. And the sizzle reel, uh, maybe Ryan Johnson's trilogy is shooting, but that was, uh, uh, the sizzle reel has me asking more questions about the series than ever before. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. Force is with me. And I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. Is that the same? Is that the... You guys remember the Disney Investors Day? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When they made all of the massive announcements right, and all yeah, that stuff. That Remember they blocked insane. out the screen for the people that weren't actually investors at a certain level? Yes, I do. And they, were, they showed oh, something for Kenobi? Yeah. I think that was what they showed. That's probably Yeah, it. that makes sense. Because there doesn't seem to be anything no. going on other than what you would have expected from that. Right. The the, the concept art was really cool. Yeah, it's cool. It yeah, and we're going to talk about that. Um, let's just start with this uh, one-word reaction to the trailer. BB. Ooh, ah. Uh, you you Ooh, threw this uh. upon us. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um <laughs> excited i guess that's okay. i'm i am pumped for the series um i i'm trying to think of synonyms for exciting um or excited but i want to say satisfying for the fans who have wanted to see this character come back uh, i didn't even think about one for myself um good job there yeah good planning there Dad. <laughs> um um yeah I, I, hype Hype, just, yeah. yeah. It was just designed to hype uh, things. Um, and it worked. It. And it did. It was absolutely good. We got our uh, first look at some of the concept art, um, which, again, that's, you know, that you have to take concept art with a little bit of a grain of salt because you never know if they're going to show it. But when they put it in a teaser like that or a you know reel, that it's then there's story beats within it that I think we're going to see in there. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about some of those. All right, we get our first look at old Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Uh, kind of a weathered uh, sitting up on that. Uh, was it a do-back or something it's like that? It's not a do-back. I don't, I don't remember what, what it's it called, though. Yeah. So he's sitting up on that. Uh, Sam, what do you think he's been doing this whole time? <laughs> I mean, again, that's what this show is all about, is to answer that question. Um, I mean, he, he's he got to figure out his place in the planet. I mean, he probably didn't start off in that little cubby hole out in the middle of the, the Badlands or whatever. He probably started off in the cities. He's been, you know, meeting some of the locals and figuring out the best way to, to help Luke, probably talking with the Owen and, and Amberu. So he's probably been dealing with that stuff at this point. And who knows what shows up, what, what threats show up in the desert. So, hmm, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that we do see him a lot in the cities, I think, because he obviously knows of Moss Eisley and That's everything true. that happens there because he experienced it. Do you think we guys we see a pretty young Cobb Vanth? You know, kid version of him. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it would be tough to fit. There's a little cameo. Um, but he, maybe he goes and is in Moss Espa. And I think that there are a lot of things that they could do with his 
feeling of being in all of these places because he's he's always lived in Coruscant and in the high places and now he's going to Tatooine where is I, I think that what we're going to see in this story is that for 10 years he's been pretty much held up and and hiding um, I think he's been trying to grieve the the uh, fall of Anakin and the Jedi Order and the fall of the Republic. I mean, all of that is a massively heavy burden mm-hmm. that he feels uh, with that. I think he's watching Luke. I think he's trying to take it. Maybe there's some moments where he's he's helped rescue mm-hmm. Luke or protect Luke or, or whatever. But in the end, I don't think anything of significance has happened. I think there's going to be something that happens in the opening episode of this that's going to force Kenobi to stop being being passive in this entire thing and go into action. And that's what launches our story forward with it. We see um, another uh, shot, a rebel base. Um, It has these T-47 airspeeders, which are in Empire Strikes Back. That's what they convert to the snow speeders. Right. um, With that. Uh, Nathan, how much of the rebellion do you think that we're going to get to see in this series? I'm I'm not sure how much we will get. I honestly don't want a lot. I really want this to focus on Kenobi is, is the primary focus and not how he's helping the rebellion or a mission that he was put on by the rebellion. I want this to be about Kenobi. I think we if we see them every now and then is fine. I think if we, you know, he goes for them for help or maybe has one episode where he helps them out, um, it would be really cool. I'm I don't think we see a lot of them though. I, I hope that they don't at least. Yeah, I feel, I I agree. I hope it's more like Obi Wan's caught in the middle of this power struggle between the two. I mean, obviously he takes a rebellion side. But he's just more like a passive observer in the, in those events because that's not what he's there for. He's there to help Luke. Um, so I hope it's just more like you see these two factions warring and he's just kind of trying to stay out of it. I think we got to be be uh, aware of the reality that the rebellion basically hasn't even formed um, at this that's point. That's true. We're mm-hmm. 10 years after... Uh, Revenge of the Sith, 10 years before A New Hope. This is the same period t- of time as Solo. And so you've got um, uh, Emphis Nest. Yeah. Ooh. Um, that's what if we see Emphis that's Nest right. in we, this? Yeah, we won't. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's the level of rebellion organizer. You've got Saw's partisans running around. You've got Bale doing his behind the scenes squadron. stuff. you got, no, you don't even. Uh, don't even that's like a few years, like five years, I think. Before. Really? I thought that was, that was no, formed pretty early. No, no, no. We don't have anything like that right now. Mon Moth is still in the Senate. Bale is still in the Senate. So any rebellion is pretty behind the scenes right now. Okay. So I don't, I, if we do see the rebellion, we're going to be seeing the very beginnings mm-hmm. of it versus anything else. Uh, there's another scene that looks very clear, clearly kind of looks like the underworld. It looks like something's uh, stripped uh, straight out of, um, you know, the prequels, uh, even on that. Uh, Sam, do you think that that underworld scene that we saw as Coruscant? Maybe. I I don't know how you bring that in effectively. I feel like you really can't take Obi-Wan off world much because, that would kind of interfere with his whole point of being on Tatooine. We know Luke doesn't leave because that's like his whole like reasoning for wanting to join the the academy is to get off the that rock. So I don't know how you take Obi Wan anywhere else, and therefore I don't know how you get to Coruscant. It must be they're showing you another character. Yeah, yeah they show another planet um, on there, kind of a new planet. BB Nate, what are some of the reasons that Kenobi would have to leave Tatooine in this? Series? Um, maybe to draw attention away from the fact that Luke is on Tatooine because if yeah. Kenobi's there then there might be a reason for him to be there it's Tatooine there's absolutely no reason for a Jedi like that to be hiding out on there and there's obviously connections to Skywalker on there so Luke <laughs> um, so maybe he's leaving planet to draw attention off of that and maybe he has decided to take some influence from the Inquisitors and hunt them down yeah because we do get that photo or that that concept art of a Imperial shuttle of some sort with an Inquisitor with an Inquisitor into some uh, some storm troopers landing on what it appears to be Tatooine. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. With that. Sam, do you think it's uh, the second sister, seventh sister, any of those? It looks like the, I forget which I number it seventh. is. Seventh in the game? I think no, seventh. It's second it's in the second game. second in the game? Okay. Yeah. The, it looks a lot like the second sister from Fallen Order. And I can't remember the timing of Fallen Order. Fallen Order takes place about ten years. Um, or It's pretty close to the big, uh, to episode four yeah okay then you could see the second sister i'm trying to remember then i'm trying to remember well i feel like the rebellion is pretty well uh cemented in that game 
Okay, we'll have to check it out. Anyway, I, I feel like it, as long as she's not dead <laughs> at this point, um, I think you could definitely see the second sister show up, and it wouldn't be hard to transition her from game to live yeah. action. You just bring the same actress. You know, there there was a scene while we were where we yeah, and yes, yeah, Samuel had did watch the trailer or the yeah, teaser just before <laughs> just before we started recording this segment. Um, there was a scene that you kind of saw him as being underground um, underwater some, uh, I think or, or underwater or yeah. whatever. I don't think that it looks underwater. I think it looks like Coruscant. I think it looks like the Jedi temple mm-hmm. um, on that. And so now we have this idea of their stormtroopers in the Jedi temple, which we know is, is probably real mm-hmm. um, whether or not that's actually what the, the concept art was for Nate. How would you feel about Obi-Wan Kenobi in this adventure this journey him having to leave Tatooine and go to some of these other planets ending back on ending up back on Coruscant mm-hmm. and in the Jedi Temple again how I'm, would you feel I'm about not that? sure I don't know the purpose of him going back to the Jedi Temple I'm trying to think of a reason he would have and I can't really think of one I mean of course uh, was it Jocasta new in the Darth Vader Lords of the Sith series that actually did go back to the Jedi Temple she had a reason though she was getting an artifact so I don't I don't feel like Obi-Wan would have any use for an artifact though so I'm not sure why he would go back yeah I mean unless he's like somehow captured and taken prisoner which kind of throws a wrench into literally everything I I don't know why he would go there. It would be interesting to see his thoughts and his emotions being back in such an important place. I don't think we've ever really addressed the possibility that the Kenobi series would would really extensively take Kenobi off of Tatooine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that that's actually really interesting. Uh, the yeah. idea and him going to a rebellion base or him going to Coruscant. Uh, you know, we already saw that underworld location that looks kind of like Coruscant. Mm-hmm. So if he's there in that underworld location, maybe that other planet is where that rebel base is um, yeah. that we've seen. So, so if he's going, if he's on Coruscant, it's possible that there would be a reason mm-hmm. he needs some information. He needs to try to find somebody. And so he's going to the maybe Jedi the Archives. I, rem- the, I remember the Inquisitors are training somewhere. And you know, all of that, temple. all of that could be going mm-hmm. on. I think it would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, yeah. Then we have Darth Vader a hologram. We get a couple shots of it um, uh, where he's kind of sitting. It looks almost certainly he's on uh, Mustafar his in, in his castle. Mm-hmm. Um, he's looking at a hologram. Uh, we can't tell at all who that hologram is. Um, Sam, speculate irresponsibly for just a second. What are the chances we get Ian McDiarmid back as Sidious in this series? I feel like that'd be the perfect place to bring him back. Mm-hmm. If anywhere, it'd be to hang out or it'd be <laughs> not hang out. Just his uh, buddies. Like, Yo, what? <laughs> What's up, Vader? How you doing, man? Right. We're just going to hang out here. We're going to FaceTime for a little bit. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think <laughs> it would be... We're better to have E. McDermott work as the Emperor, except with Hayden again. They had oh, such a good yeah. a good chemistry in oh, the prequels. Oh, I need this now. It would make sense to bring them back. Yeah. And remember this. at Celebration 2017, you guys went to that panel we where did. they were there together. Yeah. It was they so much fun. each other to yeah. death. Oh, yeah. It was such a fun panel. Make it so. Yes. That's a Star Trek <laughs> reference, but that's okay. Um, all right. <laughs> but that's okay. Kenobi versus Vader. You see that big clash. It yes. almost looks like we're back on Mustafar again. It's, mm-hmm. it, it, but, he's, it but Vader's in his it's, Vader suit. Yeah. It, that yeah. is Mustafar. Lava everywhere. Big, like, you know... Okay, so you've, you've, you've looked at the picture. I have. Did you notice who has the high ground? Well, yes, it's Vader, but it's tilted. So because it's not he's like, like it's like got cybernetic legs to ensure. No, he has the it's high ground. like it's literally. He's it's like higher well, there's like it's like it's like tilted. It's like a catwalk that's falling. And I'm wondering, do you guys <laughs> think they're trying to one up the battle? I don't. Do you know. think they're gonna try to no. do? Do you think they're gonna try to at least? recreate the same hype around that, but with Vader and Obi-Wan this They did show some sequences of him training. I am no... I am holding back on these thoughts. Oh, I'm I'm not not throwing up expectations. It is a vision, maybe? Like a a nightmare that Obi-Wan has where he ends up fighting... Vader, but it's like a nightmare, so he like loses doesn't on he, Mustafar or something. Doesn't he have dreams in the uh, Kevin Scott story yeah. that we got? So that's where I'm thinking it goes. He's having some nightmare where he ends up getting like chopped up by Vader or something on Mustafar, and it's this really traumatic experience. I don't think we actually get them back on Mustafar. Well, that would just be. I think fans would absolutely love it, myself included. But it is kind of jumping the shark if you think about 
got it. No, it's not. Make it happen. Let's do <laughs> Make it. Make it so, right? Just give me all the fan service you can give me. I'm I am Kylo Ren on that 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 gorilla walker in The Last Jedi on crate screaming more more give it anyway yes. that was good you know you could have just found like a clip to put that in there. no I'm just, I'm just okay. I, I did <laughs> it's too much uh, there were some quotes we'll run through them real quick because you know you can watch the, the sizzle reel and get the quotes um, just like the pictures but we anyway there's a hunger uh, Ewan McGregor he says there's a hunger for this character to come back the fans have waited long enough you know um, yeah that's something I mean, fans loved his portrayal. He was excited. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see him uh, play this character. Deborah Chow, she said, something that's extremely exciting is the return of, obviously, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, It's quite a dark time that we're coming into with him just being a Jedi. It's not safe. There are Jedi hunters out there. So I think that's confirmation that that was an Inquisitor, and we're going to have live action Inquisitors. Okay, that's where I'm just training for. Dad. I just He's not training for Vader. Okay, I wouldn't for- be 100 percent sure. I was thinking back to Fallen Order, and I'm gonna have to spoil it for Dad because it's been over a year since we've had Fallen Order. <laughs> um, Vader himself showed up to fight Cal Kestis. Yes, it's Cal Kestis. He already had an Inquisitor on Cal Kestis, so he he himself takes priority with Jedi that defeat Inquisitors. Even if it's not Obi Wan freaking Kenobi, mm-hmm. so there is a high possibility that Darth Vader is going to fight Obi Wan. Oh, yeah, that's love, a f- I love you, BB Nate. You know this is why you're my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, totally. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right. Yeah, uh, that Re- note. You're in McGregor. The most beautiful thing of all is that it brought me back together with Hayden oh, and of aw. course Deborah Chow. We couldn't tell the story of Obi Wan Kenobi without addressing Anakin or Vader. And you're right. They, this series would make no sense without exactly. having to deal with the issue of that. That's the last time we saw Kenobi uh, in the story. We have to know that. Um, if you're thinking that you can predict what Deborah Chow and Lucasfilm are putting together in this limited series, you may <laughs> want to go home and rethink your life. Um, <laughs> it, I think it's promising things that we would never have dreamed of. Uh, when's this? Th- when's this coming out again? I think it's not soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah. Don't get too excited about that Daredevil season four rumor. Uh, the source says he was mistaken. Yeah, I never said really. season four, Dad. I said new reboot series. That's what you. Well, told that's me what too. they were talking about. Though, well, so. okay. I think yeah. it, it might happen still. But Zack Snyder reveals the Batman villains he wanted in the DCEU, and I am not happy that it didn't get made. Yeah. <laughs> what, were, what were they? It was going to be you know Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler, the Rogues and Gallery. everything. It was going to be that, and then we got a little bit more details uh, about the Batman movie. Movie. It was going to be Deathstroke getting into Batman's head a lot and oh, making geez. him not know. And I was just, ugh. yeah, that's ugh. so and, disappointing. And this one, I I take such sadistic pleasure <laughs> what? in communicating <laughs> what? right now. I am. I have. I'm going to take my time with this one. Like a fine we don't one. have time. We're already over. I t- <laughs> at this point, it doesn't really matter for all of those. YouTubers and clickbait toxic Star Wars people that have been making the claims that Kathleen Kennedy's job was on the line. Um, it Which was a- technically... It was. <laughs> I mean, contracts can get renewed and not renewed. No, like but. she was fired. They literally like Doomcock. You know, it's hard to even say that with a straight face. Why would you call yourself that? Anyway, um, went on his YouTube channel and said that she, she's been fired and that all of the the Kathleen Kennedy Disney projects have been have been canceled. Wow. <laughs> And then Kathleen Kennedy's contract was renewed for another three years today. Heck yeah. Let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Um, and, and meanwhile, you know, people start screaming all around the world. that are, As right. if millions of voices. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm so excited. I know I mentioned at the beginning, I am really excited about Friday's uh, episode where we talk about the Matrix and we talk about some of the religious uh, elements that are tied into the matrix, but you don't my, think you could, you could, oh, there's, there's so, so much, there's many. a lot. There's, there's so much so more many. that you guys haven't even heard and really? talked about this conversation with Stuart. Um, my pastor, our pastor, uh, super oh. excited, uh, for that. Uh, so yeah, make sure you are subscribing to the show so you can get that one. Um, and again, thank you cufflinks.com, uh, for sponsoring the show. we literally couldn't do this show uh, without you right now. So thank <laughs> yeah. you, uh, for that. And thank you listeners, all of you. Thank you for listening uh, to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. If you had a good time listening, please share this with your friends.
your friends. Yeah, and of course, the show, it's only a small part of the Tatooine Suns world. Um, Multiverse. Multiverse, (laughs) omniverse, whatever you want to call it. Um, So be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to get in on all the action. Thank you, Dad, for keeping those running. Mm -hmm. Um, And keep up to date on everything (laughs) we got going on at TatooineSuns.com. Again, please remember to follow the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss our next episode Friday about The Matrix with my friend Stuart. Thank you. Please listen to that one. It's going to be so good. Um, remember that if you drop us a review um, on any podcast app, but specifically it's easier for us to find out about them. If you put them on podchaser.com slash tattooing sons, uh, we will make a donation in your honor to one child to help a child living in extreme poverty. Thank you so much for doing that. Give us a review, please. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It would mean a lot to us. All right. Uh, anything else that you would like to say? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Always. This party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me.